Good day learners. Today we will be discussing about isoclines. After completion of this course, you will be able to understand what are isoclines and we will also try and understand some special cases of isoclines. So let's begin this lecture. See, the term isocline is derived from a Greek word that means same slope. So, we can say that isocline is a curve that has a same slope or a constant slope. It is seen that an isocline is a curve that starts from the point of origin and it passes through an isoquant map of a form and the marginal rate of technical substitution between two inputs x and y is constant that is throughout an isocline the marginal rate of technical substitution is constant that is the slope of the curve is constant now see by this what we mean that it will join all those different points within a given graph where the slope is similar now on the basis of it, we can understand two special cases of isoclines. The first special case is of ridge line. Now, ridge line is a line which is the locus of points where the marginal product of factors of production is zero. We'll try and understand with a graph. Assumingly, this is an isoquant. This is another isoquant, second isoquant, and this is third isoquant. Now see, as we know that isoclines are the one where the slope of the curve is constant. Now, we will try and identify how ridge lines are a special case of isoclines. Now, if you look at this point, your marginal product of factor is 0 and this point is parallel to your x-axis. And this point, again your marginal product of factor is 0 and this point is parallel to your x-axis. After this point, in this region and in this region, it is not economical for a producer to produce. Now, this is your another point, this is your another point, this is one point and this is another point. So a line that will join all these points is known as a ridge line. This line lies on the upper portion. This is known as upper ridge line. And the line below is known as a lower ridge line. Now see, these ridge lines, so we can see that this is a upper ridge line and this is our lower ridge line. So, ridge line is a line that basically touches all the points where the marginal product of factors is zero. The usage of this ridge line helps us in understanding the concept of economic region of production. Now see, an economic region of production is a region where a producer is willing to produce and the production takes place in an economic manner. That is, beyond the economic region of production, it is not feasible for a producer to mint benefits or to make the production in an economic manner. Now, if you look, this is a point 
A, this is point A, point B, point C, point D, E, F, G and H. Now, the point E, F, G and H are in your lower ridge line and point A, B, C, D are in your upper ridge line. Now, you can see that at point A, B, C and D, your marginal rate of technical substitution of labor to capital is infinity. That is beyond these regions in these points it is not feasible for a producer to produce any commodity. At point E, F, G and H your marginal rate of technical substitution of labor to capital is zero that is beyond these points it is not feasible for a producer to produce any commodity. Now these the points that lie between upper ridge line and lower ridge line helps us in identifying the economic region of production. So this is one of the special cases of isoquants that helps us in understanding the economic region of production. The another is the another usage of these isoclines is seen in case of an expansion path. Expansion path. Expansion path is defined as a line that gives us least cost methods of producing different levels of output when the prices of factors of production are unchanged. See, when the producer is looking to maximize its production and is trying to squeeze its, its scale of production, what he will do is he will take help of two things. First one is your ISO cost line and second one is an isoquant. So different combinations of least cost combination that are joined by a line is known as an expansion path. Now there are different assumptions that are taken into consideration while drawing an isoquant. The first assumption is the factors of production must be two that is labor and capital. Second is the units of labor and capital must be homogeneous. See it is an important assumption because in case of non-homogeneous situations we won't be able to see an expansion path depicting the properties of an isocline. Thirdly, the prices of labor and capital is constant. And the last one, the firm will increase its total outlay in order to expand its output. Now, This line is an expansion path. Now this is isoquant 1. Let's assume this is isoquant 2. These are least cost combinations. First and second. Now the point where your isoquant is tangent. Oh sorry where your uh, iso cost line is tangent to your isoquant. Is the point where the least cost combination exists. Now, after joining all the points of least cost combination, we get an expansion path. This is a diagrammatic representation of an expansion path. Now, there are three, four points E1, E2, E3 and E4 where your ISO cost is tangent to your ISO point. Now, joining these points E1, E2, E3 and E4 will give the expansion path of a firm. Now, if you look, the slope of ISO cost line is equal to the ratio of factors of production or the prices that is paid or money that is paid to factors of production. So the labor gets wages and your capital gets interest. So the slope of ISO cost line is equal to W upon R where W is wages and R is interest that is paid to the capital. Now the, since your ISO cost line is tangent to your ISO quants, so at this point, the marginal rate of technical substitution that is marginal product of labor upon marginal product of capital will be equal. So we can see that the ratio of the prices of money that is paid to the factors of production 
is equal to the ratio of marginal product of factors of production. Now, at all these points, since we have kept the prices as constant, your the ratio of wages upon interest is constant. So these points E1, E2, E3, and E4, they depict equal or constant uh, slopes. Thus, this is and another special case of an isocline. This is all about this lecture. Thank you.